All right, greetings, family. This is Bomani Taramba, and welcome to our Black Star Repatriation and Pan African Community uh, meeting. And I'm organizing this effort along with other people that um, you'll see right on this picture on your screen if you're doing screen sharing. Uh, our consultant, Kwabna Baka, which I've known uh, from 2007, and he has done a majority of our uh, tours to Ghana, at least 12 of them. And then you'll see me in the middle. Uh, the guy that's between me and Kwabna is the, the former surveyor. I heard he's been replaced. And then you see the gentleman with the kente cloth that is our chief of the community of Jahadzi. And his name is uh, Nane Haiti III. And then you have Richard, the lawyer in blue. I, so these are all the people that work together um, as, as a, organize us together to put together a nice land deal for us to where we can not have any drama and have legitimate paperwork and we're clear on everything and everything is organized and work for the benefit of us from the diaspora looking to be a part of this wonderful uh, community and, you know, and also the town itself. And, and everything is in text uh, to kind of explain who we are. I scroll down to this um, to the first um, group of uh, information. Uh, what I have on here is saying Sunday, May 17th, and are the the two conference calls, and this, it's the same time frame and everything. And you scroll down some more, and right there you'll see the dialing number, international dialing number, online uh, meeting ID and join the online meeting. So that's all of your conference call information. So when people see the links that's in these different pages, they're asking me what's the call in number, what's certain things. And it's like, you know, you click on the conference call details, and then when it opens up, then you see this information. Right, then we scroll down, we see a big black star. That's the uh, 1957 monument right there in Ghana for independence. And that's Independence Square. And that's every time we go to Ghana, that's one of those mandatory places that you drive around and you learn about the history. And this link in our name, the Black Star, with uh, the Black Star of Ghana. And the, you know, Ghana has that nice black star in the middle of the, the flag. And this link in our connections, um, you know, with us returning. And we scroll down some more and we'll see a nice little 15-acre site map. And it'll say extension to feature land or I should say Extension Street, future land, meaning that the goal is to connect another piece of land to that part and expand our community. Uh, so this uh, site uh, map, uh, which is also on our website, and um, this kind of in everything, including the uh, group chats, you open it up, you can just see it a little better. But uh, what that represents is just a 15-acre foundation that we can put together and get the floor, everything and kind of expand and expand and there's no limitation to expand, expanding. We're in an area where it's, it's a nice sized town but it's not a whole lot there so it's the perfect setup for in, uh, real estate uh, development and expansion. And then there's a beach two miles away which is very clean and you know, so that also opens up the vision of connecting. So those are the first uh, set of things you see and now you scroll down some more, what you're going to see is a conference called Topics. Before we get into the conference called Topics, uh, I'll just give you a quick uh, overview of how we you know, came here this, as a follow-up um, to the conversations that we have had in the past. Uh, so beginning of last year, um, we were working on the Garvey Town project, uh, but in July we fired Garvey Town um, many different reasons, but the most important reason is we're looking to build something as a unique group of people and they literally cannot accommodate our needs of communication, our needs of organization, and our needs of getting us what we need on the land so where we can enjoy paradise. None of us are coming to live in a poor, righteous teacher world. We're looking to elevate ourselves as a people and just because we're looking to go to Africa don't mean that we need to go back and live in huts or bungalows and need to walk around the community and have lack of transportation to get us to our homes and have garages or car park or things that you need. It's like an endless amount of craziness. 
uh, it's also this um, learning lesson. Uh, so with as, as a group of 50 people, as far as people have uh, fill out their paperwork and put at least a deposit down, and then we're all broken up into committees. Uh, the flow of what we can you know, do is a little more organized than what other people have offered us um, here in Ghana um, since I've been traveling there in 2006 and till now. So that's been the biggest frustration the issue is trying to find organized people with land that can, you know, that we can just come together and do what we need to do and that, that can point us into a certain direction. So since we're on our own and we realize it's the best thing to do, everything is up to us. I'm simply an organized person that has the connections with the people on the ground and the will to make sure that people do what they're supposed to do and have people watching them and doing all those things. So our goal is to make sure that uh, we complete that 99-year lease um, and get it all submitted and close out an MOU and make sure we have all our legal paperwork and everything for our land and make sure everybody have their paperwork so they can legally be in the country building and there's no drama. Uh, so that's the foundation that we're working on. And uh, so far we've been able to meet the chief right away and been able to just connect with everyone, uh, which is a difference from other projects we're dealing with. Uh, sometimes deals are made and we don't know what's going on and we don't know what happened. Uh, in this situation, you can see from the beginning, especially if you look at the conference calls and the re recorded videos. So right here on this uh, conference call topic list, before we get into one, it will give you a link right there for YouTube video playlists, conference calls and videos in reference to the community. Uh, you'll see 17 videos that are a combination of us meeting the chief on the land, going to the beach and things like that. And then six uh, conference calls where we have covered the foundation of everything. And all the conference calls have been edited and cleaned up to where they're set right there on YouTube and you can play them back, listen and take notes. So that's kind of what I mean. If you have not looked at any of that information or process it, it doesn't make sense to ask any questions because you're not clear about what's going on. Just like I can't go out there and walk up to someone and then start talking to them about repatriation and investing in Africa and things like that. Um, guarantee 99 out of 100 people I talk will just be confused about what's going on. So the order of how we can understand things is by being clear on documentation, looking through information, and some people have, you know, we've talked, you know, um, have many conversations and we go over the information. Uh, so that way we generate intelligent questions so we can, you know, get information so we can move in certain directions. Because again, it's not all up to me, it's up to us as a group, and that's why we are broken up into committees. And aside from that um, YouTube list, you'll see the link uh, for uh, uh, Facebook, and also you'll see the link for the website, uh, which gives you the full overview of the uh, community itself. So that's the main purpose of having this newsletter. It does give you every detail that you need right away. And as, to and as far as talking about um, the, the community and being clear on it, uh, it's um, combination of this people who have been seeing me work on this for a while and then now they see it's a better time because we're actually doing something where it's you know it's it's about a group of people coming together and, and working it out versus people who have these um, uh, you know fake Marcus Garvey uh, the egos or think that they you know all these things that they you know call themselves um, so I've dealt with all of that and that's just too much um, I'm a simple person. I'm just all about just really business and us doing what we need to do to progress. And all this other kingship and all this other stuff is too much for me. That's why I respect the chief that we're dealing with because he wasn't on something like, if you want the guys want to come see me, you got to bring this and do all of this. He set up a nice little network for us to meet and introduce ourselves and have a conversation as a group of people. Even though the majority of people that showed up on, on the last tour with me, only three of them committed to this um, this land journey, but at the same time, too, um, you know, he was able to meet similar people, uh, and I had to explain to him that the majority of people here doesn't represent the people that are you know, moving on the community, but at the same time, too, it's our brothers and sisters from the diaspora, and they may have interests. Uh, so uh, whether you were there live or you saw the recording, it's just us giving you access to everything um, that you need to know before we move on. So there's um, things like land survey, land search, 
the 99 year lease I mentioned, the MOU that mentioned once you pay for half of the land, uh, we'll get a 99 year lease. That, and then members of our operation sign, and the members of uh, the chief elder and the chief himself will sign. And then our lawyer will process that paperwork for us to get our land deed. And then also, our brother Quabner has gotten the money to, to clear the land uh, with the guys that he has organized. And then eventually we'll get them some money for some pillars and set it up. So I'm hoping that by June, all of this is organized and put together. That way I can reach back out to everyone and say, everyone, this is here is the financial report of everything that it cost. All of the money went to here. That way you see that we're dealing in you know, transparency. And then that way we can respectfully say, we need the other half of the money to pay the chief the, the balance and close out on the MOU, Memorandum of Understanding of the 15 Acres of Land Agreement. And before all of that, we'll make sure everybody have access to everything that they need. So when you decide what house you want to build, you, know, you can have everything that you need. So we're working from a uh, point of that transparency. So that's what Garvey Town, Fiancra, and other people uh, couldn't or wouldn't do in organized I'm not a real estate expert and you know, I'm just a business organized person and you hire who you, you, you need help from and which is a consultant and also the lawyer and you organize your minds and energy and you put it together and you do the work that needs to be done and get it done. I've used our reputation as far as us doing Africa tours and investment uh, networking and our connection there to make this all work out. And some people may say, why didn't you just do this from the beginning? It's never even simple. Even now, I wasn't even prepared to do this, but you know, it's one of those things where a deal goes wrong and it's, it's just next man up or next person up. Uh, so there was no one else for me to look at to say, hey, let's go. You know, can, do, you know, can we take a look at the land you have? Can we take a look at your community program? So we just, um, since Garvey was the closest thing to what you know, people were feeling, we just basically modify some of the details and move forward. So that's what I told folks from Garvey Town. What have you sent in works. Uh, you don't have to fill anything back out because I'm using the same information. Uh, uh, so we were able to get a very small portion of our refund back. And those who wanted to move forward, I ended up just crediting them uh, from our end. And um, just basically put videos out there for Garvey Town. This, the videos we have done, all the work we've done, just edit the details and let people know if they're interested in connecting with us or doing anything uh, with uh, Garvey Town, they can reach out to me. I don't want to lose my, you know, my energy of putting all those things up that I put up so, uh, so people are still reaching out because you know, they like the concept of things. So it's literally not that much different except for that it's about us working things together and us doing things that's going to work to accommodate our needs and how we look at things and not um, uh, people who don't understand people who live in this country in America because the majority of people is from America and, you know, and most of the people from Garvey Town is from the UK and if you're going to do this kind of business you have to understand the people from the, the market that people are interested in. And in verse, people like myself will say, you know, you have to take it back to international business and you have to understand people, especially black people in all the different major parts of the world that you're dealing with and make it in a way where we can see more of ourselves, what we have in common versus our differences. Because, you know, you, you have one black person from here, one black person from another state or country or even from other, other states and there's one or two things different. But... You know, we have a certain struggle together as a people. We're all stolen, first of all, and brought to, brought to different parts of the world and things like that. Uh, so now um, we're here looking to reconnect, and we're also looking to connect with certain values versus the values that don't work for us, the people from, you know, from these Eurocentric um, mindset and philosophy. So letting everyone know that, family, this is organized... Uh, you know, for us, by us, to build a community, you know, dealing with us. And I'll do my best to organize as many things as possible and be available on a 24-7 basis uh, that people in different states and countries and be available to communicate and connect with what we need to com connect with. You know, that was one of the issues that I have with Garvey Town and everybody else. They had, they had basically business unprofessionalism 
and no class of how to do basic business when it comes to communicating and keeping up with people and also just having uh, different forums where you have consistent updates of information. Uh, so um, Garvey Town is dead, um, and if you type in Garvey Town online, you'll see some video, certain videos pop up. Garvey Town is dead and things like that. And that is my knife in the front of their chest uh, to just you know, close them out. And um, any people that have ever done any of these things to us, I've always put them on blast and put them out there and let people know, be careful of those folks. I'm a righteous and honest man as an honest man can get. And I live for our people, I live for us organizing the building together. I'm one of them people that are not a fan of government. I just think people should define what they want to do and live how they need to live and then um, put pressure on the government to empower them and things like that. So you're not coming from any kind of violent or revolution perspective. You're just saying that we need to take control of our future and, and in control of education of our children and the control of you know, all the things that we need to take control of that we don't have any hands really in because we're all born into a system that was set in a certain way. So this is us connecting to one of the most incredible African countries and then we found paradise. So now we can literally focus on doing what we need to do. Uh, so all of these things that I, you know, that I talk about is what we're going through. So I'm hoping that um, after a while we will have this more people clear about what's going on. And so family, let me go through the conference called Topics and some of the stuff that I went to earlier, but I'll just give a brief overview of them. So uh, topic one, business opportunities within Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. So once you see the site map, you see the big sign there that say business center and community center. Uh, th those buildings could be as high as one, two, or even three floors. And uh, you're talking about uh, training, service, support, business, and so on. Um, you, those are the only two main buildings there on that phase. So you're going to use that for as much things as we possibly need. We can use it for until we add on other parts of uh, phase two, which will have a lecture or educational hall, a medical center, um, nice uh, set of land in the back for you know, for farming, and you know, more space up front uh, for unique business and unique spaces to do enterprise in. And that site map is not going to be available because we have to go through that whole process of you know, getting a land survey, uh, doing a land search, and then getting someone to help us mark it out and things like that. So the same process that we just went through, the 15 acres, is the same process that we're going to be doing. We're going to do again, but We'll be more efficient with it uh, since we've already been through it already. Uh, so we're literally building a community that's business focused, that's self-sufficient as possible, uh, where we take care of the needs of what we need and any additional help we need. You know, we have a whole country of people, and the focus of us, uh, those of us who have business here and want to be able to do our business remotely and do certain things. Um, that's the purpose of creating that uh, business center, and that's the purpose of us encouraging sustainable utilities so we can have a consistent power, and we can also have our own dedicated, you know, maybe satellite for internet and things like that, which are, you know, the, the dollar signs are coming up whenever you just talk about things like that. But that's why we have committees so we can figure out how we're going to take care of everything because the budget of what you're paying for the land is for the land and for our group paperwork and things like that as illustrated in the getting started um, email and get started, getting started uh, article that's in the Black Star community page on our website. Uh, so uh, as far as business opportunities, definitely want individuals to open up their minds because that's what it is. It's taking entrepreneurship to a whole different level. Most of us live in communities where someone else provides electricity, water, internet, or your utility types uh, set up. And you go out to the gas station, you go out to a restaurant, you go out to uh, one of these corporate uh, business or office store, and we don't own any of those things. Or majority of them we don't own. Uh, so you're trying to sh we're trying to share with everyone that this gives us a chance, put our resources together, and become people that have an investment in our future. You know, we actually you know we own our community and we can operate more efficiently and 
Uh, it's just like a reduction of uh, wage slavery and a reduction of you working to giving away 75 to 125% of what you earn. Simple basic uh, concepts. Um, the biggest difference is doing it in Africa. Um, just like the beach itself represent. Uh, the chief last quote I got was $5,500 for a quarter of an acre or 80 by 100 plot on the beach. So if we had investors that wanted to build a nice beach resort, you know, we'd work out the deal, have the lawyer draw out the paperwork, and, you know, and then work it out for who's going to build and things like that, uh, and just get the deal done. And it's the same thing if you know, someone wants to build a factory and then the chief approve of it, because everything we do has to run by the chief. But it's also respectful to communicate with a person that's welcome us into the community and also are there to you know, you know, build a future with us. So, that's, um, so there's no limitation you know, or anything stopping us from expanding the business. Like I, I do tours and investment, the same thing for the business center will be used there. Uh, there's an orphanage, um, and then we also have children in our community. You know, you're, you know, my flow of education is educate children at 12, 13, 14 years old and teach them the trades of the world. It's kind of at one point there used to be trade school in this country. I don't know what happened to some of them, but I graduated from one. I uh, learned electronic technology uh, or electronic system technology, um, which it wasn't a very efficient education, but it got my mind open because uh, sometimes I still think it takes a while to learn these things. But uh, we'll be able to just connect that world because the, the population in all across Africa is a young population. It could get up to any as high as 70 to 80 percent of the people under 30 years old or under 25. Depends on the country, you know. So you're looking at the future, and you have to be prepared to educate the children you bring in and educate the children that are there to craft a new world you know, of the African family. When you think about certain communities, like you know where I come from in Kingston, Jamaica, I wouldn't be able to learn certain things for the most part. You know, if I was there in the same type of community, just like the children in Jahadzi, uh, they're not going to, most of them may not have the opportunity like uh, the chief and you know, get, get a chance to go to law school and get you know, appointed as a judge and things like that. Uh, what we're also doing is creating an uh, energy of where you're creating technical institutes. And that's one of the things that have always drawn me to, to Africa when I was first presented information of, you know, the things that we could do, you know, really excited me, just you know, being able to be someone who have worked at all these different companies from, you know, U.S. Navy to Delta Airlines, uh, other companies, uh, tech companies, and got a chance to just, you know, learn um, advanced aviation or information technology and, and things like that. And, you know, it's, it's a powerful tool to learn the business and technology. And imagine if you can craft a generation of young minds to be more business and technology oriented as that becomes more of the foundation for successful business enterprises. You know, as I was mentioning in Garvey Town, they have no knowledge of technology or business, and the only thing they knew about is Garvey, and that can only get you so far. Uh, you know, we have to educate ourselves, and the better we can prepare our generations, the, the better. So just like we have an education uh, committee and different committees, you know, it's up to us to craft the best uh, sustainable or holistic energy of, you know, a building a you know vibrant community business enterprise, so it would be kind of like you know we have our own conglomerate, and it's self-sufficient. So definitely uh, looking forward to seeing how that work, and that's why we have to have a certain mindset of people who can follow directions, pay attention to detail, do research, analyze uh, information, and also people that can adjust their schedule. Uh, understand some people are busier than others, uh, but the you know just like. I myself and other people have to make sacrifices in your normal life uh, to where we can put time into doing this. Uh, we all have to make some level of sacrifice, and I can't tell anyone what that is. Uh, people like myself, um, some of what that is is for me not to be out there hanging out at cookouts, hanging out at parties, uh, and not saying that there's anything wrong with socializing, but uh, when I look at the calculation, if I reduce myself from going here doing this, I can get so much work done, and that's how I've looked at it the last month. Uh, uh, 10 to 15 years, and been able to get. You know, so when people ask how you get all this stuff, then I say, well, I operate to where I'm working on things throughout the entire day, and studying and you know, and making it work. And I'm not uh, being an ambulance chaser, or I'm not out there doing certain other things. Uh, if I need to party and hang out when I get to Ghana, 
I can make the excuse that I'm taking out my group to party and then go hang out and have a drink and socialize. Other than that, the goal is for me to stay here and work on what I need to work on. And so, and speaking of that, uh, so it becomes the business location for those who are in the area or passing through. All you have to do is say, "Bo, my name, I'm going to be in Atlanta," or uh, "What's your schedule look like?" And they'll send you the address. You come here, we talk, we go through everything. I show you what we're working on. And for those who just need a presentation, this is where it's at. Other than that, you know, we can do a video call presentation. So everything is building a foundation of business. And then also, you come, you see a tech center in the back. Um, um, and all the, the custom-built computers and parts and all the, the science of technology that's being studied. And if I have someone that needs to be trained, it's all, everything is there. But the idea is it's a small prototype of a technology business office that you want to put as the business center and recruit people from the community, outside the community, who want to take on the many different things that we're working on or what they're working on or what other people are working on. So you're running a whole floor of business there. Let me move to the uh, next one. Uh, number two, uh, volunteers for specific projects and committees. So as I just finished talking about uh, business and professional affairs um, in a nutshell or in just an overexpansion, this committee has um, about 10 of us. And our goal is to you know, connect with everyone to where we can do a video call. Some groups have done video call and some are working on it. And the general thing that we had going is for everyone to kind of just send a little message in the WhatsApp group and introduce themselves and just kind of connect and maybe just share what they're looking to do. I have a list of things that is related to business and professional affairs. So funding budgets uh, will fall under us, uh, building plans, business development, technology development, marketing advertisement, and public relations. and building a business uh, town uh, using the beach to attract that energy. So those are some of the things that we can deal with and even the sidewalks and how certain things are going to come together. But literally it's just us using our minds and saying, hey, what's next? What are some of the most important things for us to work on and things like that. And ultimately, you know, we have all the help we need. Uh, we just have to be clear on what we, direction we're going so we can recruit the additional help. And the uh, first one of the other order of business professionalism is um, the requirement documents that we need from everyone. Um, majority of people have sent it in. Uh, so it's more than just your money. The application that's sent via email has to be filled out and signed. Type it up, um, print it out and sign it. Or you can type it up, upload it to Google Docs and um, add you know, your, your signature signature to it and save it as a PDF and send it. Uh, you can you know, do it uh, many different ways. Or you can print it out, sign it, and scan it. Uh, so that's uh, one way. But um, if you need any help, um, I got your back. I have something I can help anyone with um, or whatever directions I send, just kind of follow it. The uh, uh, criminal background check, if you do it online, uh, you need a nationwide background check. And if you're in, you know, in Europe or you live in different parts of Europe, you'd have to work out whatever background check you get and just send it in, and this is part of the checkoff. Uh, the third and fourth thing is a passport style photo, like a two by two, um, and just, you're just scanning that as a JPEG, and then your passport signature plus uh, face page, and that just gives us an idea and clarity of who you are and things like that. And this is a community of black people, um, so no white people allowed. Um, and no alphabet people, and nothing personal to anyone. We just, you know, we need to be able to come together and be about man, woman, children, and build together. It's, uh, you know, it's there in the overview. Um, and anyone ever want to have a conversation with me? I'm always open to talking and things like that. Situation that goes back to even the tours we do sometimes. I'll have sometimes I'll have a guy that comes on and, and talking to me and tell me that he wants to come to Ghana with us and everything. And then he, then he starts talking about his white girlfriend and, you know, and things like that. And usually, you know, if they have a child that's biracial, the child is fine because the child is, you know, the child is trying to learn about his African roots. So that's something that, you know, we have an issue with. Uh, but um, it's a situation where people get emotional and take it personal. And even this on YouTube, when you reply back to people, 
these are the criteria for who we want because we're trying to build a certain energy. People tend to call you all kind of names, racist, biased, this. And the same thing I went to Brazil, I was explaining to somebody about our policy. And he said, if I knew you were this person, I wouldn't support your business. And I was like, you know, I don't hide anything. I tell people who we are and what we're about. Uh, we're not here to offend people. and not here to attack anybody and things like that. But we're just here to do what we need to do for self. And we need to have less distraction from that as possible. It's a real situation, and I'm fine who I am as a person. I don't have anything out there that, you know, that's just targeting anyone. I just, you know, we just want to live in peace and be able to focus and build what we need to build without being distracted. Like I said earlier, not into the ambulance chasing things. We're not into this running around America trying to, you know, chase every little case and things and being distracted, literally into focusing, and now we can build a rich black enterprise for our children and the children in the different communities in Ghana and encouraging others. You know, they may have different variation, but get back to nation building. Uh, so our business professional energy will be focused on this, literally just being organized as a business group of people. And, and the first order of things is for everyone to take care of information that's part of the requirement and to also keep up with emails and things. And if you would feel like you're just too busy to communicate and deal with us, um, you know, it's what it is. I'm not here to force you to do certain things, but you're, put, you're putting your money in. It's not, enough, it's not enough, and it's not the main criteria. So I you know, advise anyone to be clear on the refund and cancellation policy because we have to have that on there if people feel that they may not be clear with things. But the only thing I can tell anyone is that if you're not clear on anything, it's because you didn't read the details. Uh, so as I talk about professionalism, technology, and things like that, Reading is a fundamental part of that and being clear. Uh, so let me scroll down to some of these and then I'll open up for some of the people from different committees. As far as business professionalism, uh, when I talk with everyone in that group, we can talk about more things. But um, that's our overall sense of that as that becomes one of the main committees to kind of help everything else get organized. What I want to do is... Um, for the other nine committees, I'm going to open up and if we can have different people from the different committees available to just give an overview, I'm going to scroll down. The first, um, if uh, we can have a few people from safety, security, surveillance, uh, education, and sustainable energy. So let me open up. I took a family, I took you out of lecture mode because that's what I got caught up on. Uh, lecture mode, uh, no one can click on and open up the call. So while we're in uh, mute mode, um, I have the, the committee that I just mentioned, as I, the one that went through all the business stuff, organizing the business committee, um, just looking for someone given over. It doesn't have to be as long as what I just explained. Um, just want uh, someone from that committee just to give an overview. Yes, hello. Yes, uh, say the name um, and your committee and things okay. like that. This is Wayne. I guess um, our uh, administrators are Charles and um, I believe Michael. Um, so we did have some dis discussion around um, the security issues. So we outlined a few things that we thought um, were, were going to be important. Uh, the uh, first thing was that um, we thought the compound should, of course, be um, completely walled or fenced to essentially uh, control ingress and egress of anyone trying to uh, get into the community. Um, and then uh, I guess we can talk about, in terms of cost, how we would wall a 15-acre property whether it would be brick and mortar or chain link fence um, with um, possibly electrical fencing uh, on top or, or barbed wire on top. Um, we also thought that there should be a security gate. Are we trying to build a community or a prison? You said something about barbed wire and all those things. It sounds like a maximum security place. <laughs> well, we probably want to control, um, we wouldn't want somebody being able to easily just scale a wall if he's in the community uh, creating havoc. 
I, I don't know what kind of environment it is. If that is something that's necessary, that's one thing that I guess we could talk about. Yeah, it's a very peaceful, quiet environment, uh, safe and safe. But yeah, you, you know, we do need to uh, secure the perimeter and things like that, and there's a security uh, post and things like that, and uh, kind of analyze those things because it's a big project we're building, and we have to make sure people are there and make sure supplies are safe and things like that. So uh, absolutely, um, I just I shouldn't have been being funny about the barbed wire. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess we could do. Uh, Talk about that amongst ourselves. Hello, Wayne. Hello, Mommy. Hello, Wayne. Yeah. Yes. Hey, how you hey, doing? Uh, Michael Morgan. Yeah, Michael Morgan uh, from Trenton, New Jersey. Yeah. I'm listening in. I'm timing in here. So. Oh, okay, uh, okay. You, you want to take over? Because uh, I guess you're no, leading no, the group. No, go right ahead. Uh, I just want to Okay. That. Definitely uh, electrical fence would be, uh, be a good idea. There you go. It looks a little cleaner. Yeah, electrical, not barbed wire. You know, I don't think barbed wire would look too professional, but uh, electrical fence, of course, cameras on uh, each four corners of the property. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I might just add a professional uh, guard, uh, a local uh, police officer, uh, that would be good to have also on hand. Well, um, so I basically uh, had a contact with a security company, and I got a price for. 24 hours, seven days a week, it would cost roughly 1,500 CDs, which is $270 or so per month to have, you know, one guard. And I think we talked about maybe we should have uh, one guard during the day and maybe two uh, at night. But I think um, someone else suggested maybe that's something we should look to do ourselves, like take turns. Um, Manning security cameras and manning um, uh, the entrance, for example. Yeah, and it, uh, we have uh, we have several Marines that are in, in the group, uh, not mm -hmm. uh, in our group itself, and uh, uh, they love uh, uh, doing security. Right. Um, but I guess for the cost, when you think of uh, the cost, we could actually outsource that and be more managerial in terms of. Um, uh, controlling the the guard and security part, and not be the active one actually patrolling and actually at the uh, manning the gates. I think that's one of the things we talked about as well. Uh, so we thought, um, of course, a security system to um, monitor all common areas, and we thought we should also encourage each household to have their own security system, their own security camera system to basically um, monitor uh, their own perimeter. And I think we talked about um, maybe having a designated contact, let's say in the local police force, um, in case we need quick response that we can, you know, somebody we can call a point of contact. Uh, I don't know if that person would be um, on a payroll, you know, stipend, for example, monthly stipend, to ensure a quick response. Um, I think that was it, right, uh, Michael? Is there anything else you wanted to add? Uh, when it comes to, like, fire prevention, uh, I believe that uh, I'm not too sure uh, how far is the fire station from the site that we're going to be at as a community. I believe that uh, each household should have a uh, water hose intact, and also that uh, I'm quite sure there's going to be fire hydrants on the, in the committee also. We have to make uh, sure we have to account for how many fire hydrants are going to be in place. That's all I have to add to it right now. Wayne, thanks for the, um, the overview. And as um, Michael was talking about, as far as no, because these are the questions I'm going to get, especially when I get the folks that's talking about medical. They're going to ask me where the hospital <laughs> And mm. I'll be honest with everyone, we're in the, you know, there, there, there's hospital, there's places like that there. But literally, our goal, that's why we have a ridiculous ab uh, abundance of land, and the chief is open. Not, not everything is just for sale. He's open to giving land for a police station, giving land for a fire department given land for a school, anything that's for the actual town itself for everybody, um, that's something that we can negotiate. And that's the reason why we also just paying for the land that we're going to live on and things like that.
the town itself, um, and next time I'll just make sure to try to get a better a better video where you can actually see us coming in in the town itself. Uh, the town is big enough to where you can build those things, but we're literally um, an hour and a half away from Accra, an hour and a half away from Cape Coast. So usually by the time you get to that middle ground, that's where you have more of a virgin type land and things like that. Uh, so we have to put into our mindset that you know we can organize thoughts of and you know find investors to build these things um, and literally just build a town based on our mindset. I don't, I don't have all of the ideas as far as how we're going to come up with all the money for it, but um, the quality of things that you're going to need as far as even medical and wellness. You can create a medical and wellness building on phase two, uh, so by the time people actually start moving, they'll be you know, set up there and folk, people who have that background can kind of work there. But uh, we have to also expand our mind to, you know, to something to where you know you can get things done in that area. Uh, so the vision of the Chiefs, they've, they've always wanted to, they've always been frustrated with Accra or Cape Coast and felt like they were just being looked over and they've never gotten the funding or investment to build that area. And that area is actually a beautiful area. It could be a beach town and many wonderful things. Uh, so I just want to share that with everyone to open up their vision and their mind that that a lot of things are not clear about. Like if you ask me about a grocery store, you ask me about a bunch of things. The closest thing I'm going to say is the Westlake Mall is about, is about 20, 25 minutes away. And another city that's developed is Kaswa that's 30 minutes away. So there's things like that are, you know, we're going to mention, but we can build a unique town and city in that area where we are. For those who are available for the education, the cultural, and social affairs, if you get a press conference to meet yourself, we know who we're talking to. And to give you a name uh, and just give some updates or some overview on, on that committee. Greetings. This greetings. is Diora. Yellow, can you hear me? Uh, greetings, Diora. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, great. Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting myself. Um, uh, myself and Roz Marvin, we are the um, co-leads for the Education and Social Affairs Committee, and we are still working to get our um, group kind of together and up and running. Um, but there are some things that we have been working on. Um, we've been really focusing initially on alignment and making sure that we understand what are the needs and what is the intent of this committee. And um, we are aligned in the sense that, you know, preliminary vision statement here, we want to develop an African-centered, sovereign learning environment. Um, we're looking at K through 12, and we are also looking at developing technical, essential technical skills for when you think about high schoolers and adult education. Um, a lot of the times, as many of you know, we don't have the skill set, carpentry, plumbing, um, you know, agriculture, electrical. We don't have those skill sets, and so that's what the technical component is going to do, and that's critical because though we have these committees, it's really all hands on deck, and so we want to work together to make sure that folks have the skill set to be able to support the various initiatives, whether it's agriculture and livestock, whether it's, um, you know, it could be business services, security. Um, we have to, we've got, I know I have three teenagers and three uh, males, and so this, when I think about some of the skill sets that they need to have or we're working to develop, we definitely can see an opportunity. So the education and cultural affairs goes beyond just the K through 12, but it's also, again, the technical education. And then there's another component. The other component is helping us acclimate to Ghana and the Ghanaian culture whether that means learn tree or, you know, languages, um, ga that's spoken there, or really integrating ourselves into the community. So we're looking at this as a threefold initiative, but one of the things that's really important um, when um, Brother uh, Ross Marvin and I spoke, 
is that when we go over there, it's important for us to set up our own institutions, not so much as to isolate ourselves, but we want to be very intentional with respect to what our children are learning. For example, my children have been in the African-centered learning environment since birth, and that was intentional. And so I know me personally, I couldn't see myself going all the way over the water, all the way across to Ghana to get a colonial education. And so having an African-centered education and learning from that perspective is critical. We still have to poll and do a thorough needs assessment to see where everyone is, because I know we have different individuals in various stages of their lives. We have, in this household, we have three teenagers. Um, and so, again, education is really important. I know, you know, Bamani, you have a little Bamani. So we have to just think about, um, we have to do an assessment to determine what are the needs. That way we can um, forge a plan and come up with a, a learning strategy. That is beautiful, excellent. Uh, and that's what we have to do with, you know, we have, we have to think about all aspects of this being independent, uh, self-sufficient, self-reliant, all those uh, wonderful things. And uh, all of us uh, together have all of the backgrounds we need to actually make this work. And so perfect, uh, Dira, um, and as, you know, we build these groups, it was just to start communicating. So we can use the next few weeks uh, to communicate with each other and just kind of build on to what we're working on. Right, yeah, thank you. Wanna, uh, you are welcome. Anything else you want to share? Um, that, that's where we are right now. And I, I'm, I just to echo um, those, of, um, those of us that are on that committee, I'm just working to kind of get us together so that we can really iron out this vision. We've worked through it. We have a direction of where we want to go. And the more planning and becoming prepared that we do over here, the better it's executed on the other side. Thank you. I absolutely, my sister. Appreciate you. All right, can I get some feedback from sustainable energy and utilities or medical and wellness, uh, whichever one is uh, prepared? And uh, family note that I'm going down the new VETA so you know if you're up uh, based on your committees. All right, so we are at 2D as in Delta, and that's sustainable energy and utilities, and 2E, medical and wellness. Uh, press star six to uh, unmute yourself and give your name and just an overview of your committee and what you're working on. Good morning. This is Charles. Hey, Hello. I'm Rinza, Charles. Yes, I'm from the, the wellness group. And uh, I'd like to share some things that we discussed on our conference call on Friday. All right. I'll st start off by talking about the hospital in Winneba. Um, it's basically a no-go zone. You know, um, hospitals really, really run down. They have power outages, and, um, you know, it's a hospital that's designed to treat at least 500 patients. They only got about maybe like two doctors amongst all those patients. So it's not going to work out for, for any of us to try and utilize their facilities. So, you know, we discussed about building our own you know, medical center. And on top of that, we we considered, you know, um, preventative medicine measures. We want to <clears throat> focus on prevention, you know, um, regarding non-GMO vitamins, supplements, vegetarian and vegan diets, offering organized exercise to include cycling, etc. We also would like to have emergency transportation, if possible, until we get the medical facility up and going, something like an SUV or something like that, or a van. Um, you know, um, we're also interested in, you know, um, drinking fresh water, alkaline water, and we could achieve this by machine or finding natural spring water, and, you know, we like to test the water using pH strips to make sure any water sources we find, you know, has good alkalinity. And we can also consider filters as well. We also 
are interested in herbs, trees, vegetation. We would like to see some of the following trees and vegetation for the community garden. And um, those, would, those would be moringa, soursop tree, sorrel, neem, dandelion, berries, edible greens, non-GMO seeds, and, you know, organic produce using no pesticides. So that's basically what we discovered in the wellness uh, team on Friday. That, that is uh, perfect. Uh, so that's why I want to make sure that we have good energy with this uh, chief so we can um, organize a plan sooner than later to see where we can actually build you know, a hospital, um, uh, which you go, a lot of things are going to it. Uh, a lot of other people have to get involved. Uh, but for now, we can build our own medical center and for those who are doctors and those who have health and wellness background. Uh, and then we can also just hire and train and help uh, to do certain basic uh, things and also get internal volunteers in the community. So part of that uh, beginning of phase two, that's where we can put the medical center. So it ends up being like right in the middle of you know, the community right at the front. And as far as agriculture-wise connected to that, uh, your goal is to grow all of the, you know, like one thing I love about Ghana is everything that heals your body and make your body strong and it, it grows in the country and, and so we'll grow it on our property and just kind of build you know, a culture of this health and wellness. I, I personally believe, you know, the medicines and the herbs and stuff that are in Ghana, the, the, the country is rich with herbs and natural resources to literally eliminate any kind of illness that we do not need to rely on a westernized pharmaceutical type of system. We can, you know, treat our own selves and, you know, eliminate most illnesses just by using preventative measures. They, they eating know, clean, man. eating clean. But the only reason why a lot of us are sick here in the West is because we're following a Eurocentric healthcare system where basically really it's designed to keep us ill so they could profit from us. But that is not what we intend to do when we start our um, village down in Ghana. So that's just all that I wanted to chime in about. All right, well, perfect. Well, I appreciate your energy. And uh, we definitely have Vision family to do some wonderful things in that area, and it will just be one of those beautiful things to see us build a nice black hospital and things like that. You never know which direction it may go, but one of the biggest issues that we have here, uh, there, and since I'm in Georgia, not West Africa, in uh, West Africa, is um, you know when people talk about um, health and wellness, uh, some people have money; they they get on a jet plane and they're there in the UK or they're there here in Atlanta. Uh, for whatever appointments and surgery, and for those who have those kind of benefits and the flying benefits, you know that's that, that's fine. But um, uh, we want to be able to build that level of respect uh, where we are in Africa, um, that we feel safe you know, going to an establishment like that. So perfect. So uh, you guys can always just keep organizing, just like the rest of the groups, and you know, us by us talking and communicating about these things, we're building a foundation. And then, you know, we just implement things little by little and get there because uh, a lot of things are kind of out of, you know, move because we're still, you know, we still got to get certain things else in place. But us just being on this path right now, it makes a lot of things clearer. And then for those who have to go go after doing the research to get the money to get these things done or got them build a connection to get investors to invest in these things, you know, we'll, we'll have a lot more clarity. So... That's the purpose of getting everyone to chime in, and then once we go through the call and edit it, we can just take notes and things like that and keep up with it. Uh, but our uh, brother, if uh, you just can just keep up with the the notes, and you know, you just keep on adding to it, and then after a while, it becomes a research paper. Uh, sure. And all of us will have access to it, kind of like you know, medical protocol. That's perfect. Uh, so I appreciate you. So if you can just meet yourself and let me just try sure. to get to a few of these other committees and then we just open up for general questions. All right, so up next is sustainable energy and utilities and planning and development. 
uh, which I'll do the plan on development and I'll see if I'll chime in uh, Renee um, also. But uh, Jonathan or Chaz, are you on the call? If so, press star six to unmute yourself. And if it's not Jonathan or Chaz, anyone that's a part of that initiative that was up for uh, sustainable energy and utilities, if you can just give us an overview of what you guys have been talking about or what your group has been talking about. Uh, so um, planning and development. Right? So just like the business and professional affairs, planning and development is the set of things I've been working on for the beginning. And now we have made it into a committee. I'm organizing a list of things. That way we can communicate with the rest of and we can tackle different things. So um, give you just a list of different things that plan and development uh, can work on. Financial planning to develop the community, the most serious thing. Uh, so for those who are in this committee that have financial background and can organize certain things, that's something that we definitely have to work on so we can share with everyone else how we're going to actually you know, fund the rest of the community beyond this our own money paying for land and doing basic maintenance. Housing plan, so um, I have a list of um, builders and that you know one of the um, group members worked on and now we just have to organize it more and then call and get notes and get samples or get information so we can just get an organized portfolio of homes that can be you know built and prices and things like that. And then we'll have the people that we have on the ground check certain things out and then you know we just have meetings organized. Uh, other plan and development is uh, how we're going to get the, the business center set up, the community center. Um, we talk about medical uh, center, uh, streets, uh, the park, security posts, and uh, community store. You know, so that's all of the uh, plan and development. We'll work a sequence where we just mainly just you know do research to get things done, and as things come online. We already have research already, and we can just get it taken care of. All right, let me see if anyone uh, else is available to add, uh, add, have, add their overview. Uh, Renee, Toya, or just anyone else that's uh, in the uh, plan and development group, uh, if you can just share some of the things that uh, you have in mind that we can work on. OK, this is Renee. I'm on the planning and development committee. Uh, and what I reached out or what I discussed with some of the group in homeowners affairs is because it was pertaining to uh, planning and development uh, was to at least try to reach out to our members and I have to three members to be investors for some of the seed capital for needed items like infrastructure on roads the community center, uh, the, uh, the lighting, and the sewer. And if we have these investors, at least six of them, that can uh, contribute $6,000 so we can get the initial seed money, uh, that would possibly help. And then another uh, member said maybe we can um, – propose uh, an amount for each member for six months. So 50 members times 100, and six months would equal like 30,000. At least we'd have that money by December, and then we can start initiating some of uh, the development that is so much needed because we do have some people going over there this year. So it's either the investors, and I have to reach out to I have three people, but uh, that's willing to do that six thousand. But if I could get three more, and I'll reach out, and you know, it's either a yay or nay, or we can do it uh, by members. So that would, like I said, give us some seed money, and then we would uh, be prepared to at least uh, start some of the projects that are uh, sorely needed, especially the roads and the lighting and the sewer. That's all I need to say about the planning and development. Um, hello. Godwin. Can I uh, add something? 
Uh, yes, uh, Wayne, go ahead. Um, we can hear you. Yeah. Um, so just an observ uh, observation since um, I've been going to Ghana a few times. It's um, very rare that anyone is, um, uh, like there's a central collection point for uh, waste, waste water, um, uh, human waste, if you will. Uh, it looks like most people are on a septic system, and they usually build that uh, septic system out of uh, brick uh, and mortar, I guess. Uh, the other group I'm in will probably discuss that further, that uh, I think each house or each building would have its own um, kind of uh, septic system and not really have a central collection point for sewage. I, I just thought I'd bring that up since, you know, that we, were, we were on that topic. Well, that's perfect. Uh, yes, I've been skimmed. Now, uh, Wayne was just talking okay. about uh, uh, waste management, right. and I was going to get you or Derek and him to just give an overview of waste management and recycling, and what are some of the ideas of what we can do. Well, I'm happy to report that the Waste Management and Recycling Committee is in its infancy stage, but uh, our brother Derek was able to get us up and running with a WhatsApp page, so our communication will flow a lot more um, a lot better now. And so we've been working on our vision statement and a couple of goals. So we've come up with a working vis vision statement, and it is to provide the Black Star community with innovative, cost-efficient, and sustainable waste management and recycling options that promote a healthy living environment. And we're going to achieve that vision statement by at least these two goals, which is to secure contracts with established waste management contractors and to find non-conventional waste management and recycling options for both residential and business buildings. So we have identified the municipality waste management company that operates in the area, and hopefully by the next um, conference call, I'll be able to inform you as to how often they pick up waste and whether or not we can get a contract with them or what's going on. And also, we're looking at a biodigester for each home as opposed to a septic tank, only because a biodigester is more sustainable than a septic tank. However, you know, we'd like to give people options. So one of our goals is to look for cost-effective waste management for each home and each business. So that's where we're at right now. Hi, right, Kim, uh, that's uh, excellent. Um, and then what we do is um, all of these uh, things that we're talking about, we just you know, put it together. You know, it's kind of like a research uh, uh, details, whichever way it's uh, type, and you're just adding on to information, adding on to information. That way, when we need to... You know, say what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to look at the report and say, okay, we decide that this is the best way to you know, to set things up for each home as far as waste management. Uh, as Wayne was talking about, it would be ideal. You know, it's always ideal to have a central point. It's just like power having a central point, but uh, we may have to start with solar power and we may have to start with a septic system for individual homes. Yeah, well, we're just going to try and identify different contractors there in the area that can fulfill our needs. All right, perfect. Um, and that was more on the uh, waste management, right? Well, at, I, I think we'll have to wait on recycling because we have to see what materials will, will there be that will need to be recycled. All right, perfect. And the thing that we can do with recycling now, we, you know, the goal is always to encourage uh, society to compost and uh, organize the recycle as best as possible. And since we're a smaller community, we should be able to pull certain things off. But uh, perfect. Uh, in time, we'll develop a recycling program, and then we just the goal is to just imp implement all these things. And uh, with us talking about it, uh, two years before we get there is you know is a is a great start. Absolutely. All right, well, perfect. Appreciate your energy. And uh, once we get some more people to join up, 
I'll be telling them about the different committees and see if we can get some more people to assist with these things uh, since everything is up to us. All right, perfect. Uh, so um, if you can, uh, star six to meet yourself again, let me just try to get some feedback from these other committees. Uh, so sustainable energy and utilities, uh, Jonathan and Chaz, you guys are still up. But if I can't hear from you, I got to keep moving down. So whenever you, when you guys are clear, just uh, chime in. All right, the next one uh, is maintenance and landscaping. Just looking for a general uh, overview. All right, and um, maintenance and landscaping, it's star six to meet yourself. And uh, you, do, you do not have to be the group organizer. Anyone that's in the group and have communicated with others uh, and looked over the details that was sent via email for each committee, you can just share any kind of update or whatever you're working on. All right, so sustainable energy and utilities um, and maintenance and landscaping. When you guys are available, unmute yourself and chime in. Hello, this is Catherine. Uh, greetings, uh, Catherine. I'm from the Maintenance and Landscaping Committee. Our administrators are Lavelle, Sires, and Hugh Prince and myself. We have just uh, initially, uh, just the initial report. We haven't all met as community, as, excuse me, as um, committee me members. But where we are now, we are trying to meet, schedule regular meetings, and to plan a layout and visual images, and to find a landscaping professional in the area that can give us some information. So that's where we are now. All right, that is uh, perfect. Uh, that's perfect, and uh, the, the main thing is definitely for us all to connect here and there, and little by little, I know all of that definitely takes time. Um, so uh, you've been able to talk to Linville and or you? Barbara and Barbara. And Barbara, perfect. Greetings, Barbara. Uh, so perfect. Um, so, um, we'll, you know, we'll keep it moving on that. Um, so, and we just, and if anyone needs, um, to connect with me, you can just always reach out to me. So let me just, um, if you can star six um, to meet yourself and just got two more um, committees to close out on and then we can just open up for questions. And hopefully it's not too late for too many people. They didn't expect the time to go along. Right, agriculture and livestock. All right, so anyone from the agriculture and livestock? Mm -hmm. Greetings, this is um, Giora. Do we have any of our leaders? I'm not a leader in this group, but I am a member of this group. Do we have any leaders on the line? That's a good, I can hear you. Let me actually look up who those people are, the folks are. Okay. Uh, that's uh, Melissa and Barbara, if, that's, if they're fine with it. <laughs> Just okay, I know that we're, overview we're of the, working. We're working to get together to actually, um, we haven't had our, our first uh, session yet, um, so I know that's one of the things I think um, we'll be, the leaders will be organizing um, soon, but really, um, for those who don't know, and again, this is Diora, but this uh, the intent of this group is it's separate from the Landscaping Committee as we are focusing on food production um, for our community and ideally, you know, the surrounding community. So we're looking at, you know, growing our own food and managing our own livestock. And it's my, um, Bomani, you can give more insight on this, but it might be in phase two. But uh, it's really critical that this piece move forward with respect to the agriculture and livestock, because if we look at what we're going through right now with this, COVID-19 business, we definitely want to be in a situation where we are producing and managing our own food supply. Um, again, we are, haven't met yet, so if we do have one of the leaders on, I'll let them chime in, but that's just, I'm just a member. <laughs> all right, well, Thank perfect, Sierra, and it's uh, all good. So under our 2 I um, agriculture livestock, the goal is to work on a five to eight acres, um, and that's out of the next 30 to 35 acres of land. So 
Uh, the deal hasn't been finalized. Uh, we're still just talking right now as far as the additional land, but uh, that is the goal that we can have at least 50 uh, acres of land and you know, five to eight of the total community uh, is agricultural based. And then it may even work it out to where we get additional land based on what we're trying to do specifically in reference to agriculture. So all the committees that are uh, organizing, I want, you know, the goal is to make sure that the things relative to those committees are going to be in place in either phase one or phase two. Uh, Bylaws and homeowners affair. Um, the, one of the things that was sent out was, to, which was sent out to everyone on the actual this uh, email list, which is a, a Black Star Pan African email list, uh, which includes 50 uh, members and then 150 people just uh, vax me to just keep them on email list updates on what we're doing. That uh, document has been sent via email. I didn't get any reply back. Either individuals read it and was okay with it, but it's one of those things where if you have any questions, you can communicate in the group chat, which was always uh, it, it was also uh, uploaded to and um, reply back to the email. All right, so anyone from a bylaws group want to uh, share or say anything about that email that was sent? This is Renee. Uh, I'm hi, the, hi, everybody. This is Toya as well, part of the okay. bylaws committee. Hi, Renee. Go, yes. go ahead, Renee. Hi, hi. Okay, yes. Greetings. Uh, hopefully, everybody has read those bylaws. They're really essential to uh, the operations of our com um, community. And uh, I will give you the overview on the homeowners' affairs. So the plan of action is to propose a, a membership fees. Uh, to each member according to the bylaws and have this adopted and approved, okay? And uh, so far we are proposing uh, $30 as a monthly membership uh, fees, which uh, should be uh, completed and approved so the members can start uh, putting in uh, these monthly fees, which will raise some of the capital that we need uh, for uh, operational and uh, maintenance. Uh, also, uh, like I mentioned before, in the planning and uh, development, those investors to secure investors. Uh, also, as an option to have, uh, and I'm kind of repeating myself, an option for the members uh, to either do um, a six-month payment plan to raise some basic costs for uh, the needed things like the streets, road, and lighting. And then also, uh, let's see, uh, to get uh, more information, because this is all operational, projection and analysis uh, for uh, the buildings, the contractors uh, that's going to be uh, advising us from the planning and development department. And then there was one other thing, because within the uh, surveillance and the security of the lands. Uh, one of our members actually, if we don't go along with the fence, because I know that's going to be voted on, um, there's also ficus uh, hedges that can be put around the perimeter. Maybe we can go with a fence or the ficus. So those were some of the things that we talked about in the homeowners uh, affairs. And I'll let Toya go ahead and elaborate if she has more information. Uh, yes, hi everybody. This is Toya out of Los Angeles. I'm part of the bylaws committee. Um, well, I guess the next thing after um, what just what re to piggyback off of what Renee was uh, speaking on is that um, at the next um, we need to start to uh, select, nominate, or uh, have people volunteer for the uh, board of directors uh, positions. Um, that would be the board of directors um, listed in our bylaws, which includes um, somebody to run for the position of president, vice president, um, second vice president, secretary, treasurer. Um, in order for us to um, have a secretary and a treasurer in place so that we can start to collect the funds um, for um, the different projects that are going to need to take place. Um, I'm also a member of the 
uh, Planning and Development Committee. We haven't met as of yet, uh, but we are, you know, I'm going to reach out to everybody and see if maybe we can start, um, have our first meeting uh, this coming week. So uh, from there, uh, we can start to get an idea on the initial cost uh, for putting in the roads and um, getting, as we were talking earlier, um, some lights, um, some ideas for power um, in order uh, for us to construct the um, community center. Uh, the community center, um, as just, you know, uh, we discussed in passing, uh, not really uh, something that's on the books as of yet, but just an idea um, at the community center to also include uh, some form of, like, dorm rooms so that while people are on the continent um, and in our community, while they're building, uh, they have a place to lay their head at night. Um, so, yes, we're going to have to raise some funds to do that. Either we can all do it across the board with, you know, 50 members uh, to make a monthly contribution. Some of us may be able to pay the full uh, six months um, amount up front. Um, in order to give us the seed money so that we can start uh, the, the basics of those buildings. Um, and um, so I'll follow up with the committee and we'll decide, um, you know, what the next step should be and present it to the rest of the members uh, for consideration. And that's it for me for now. All right, so I absolutely appreciate you, Toya. And yeah, you and I will uh, we'll connect this week and we'll uh, definitely talk about uh, meeting with everybody else. Um, uh, for, as far as business and professionalism and uh, planning and development, along with uh, Renee. So definitely, I uh, will connect and everything, and uh, appreciate your energy. I'm sorry, Bomani. Uh, this ahead. is Barbara. Hey, Green Barbara. Hi. I'm <clears throat> just to piggyback a little bit off of what Renee and Dior were saying, I'm also in the bylaw committee as well as the <clears throat> Landscaping and Maintenance Committee. Um, and just to buy, uh, piggyback off of what Renee was saying, the initial investors that we're asking for who can put up the $6,000 is, is different from the $30, although it hasn't been actually voted on, that's different from what we're asking for because we, we still need that initial um, $30,000 to get things rolling. So I just wanted to make that distinction with the investors. You know, I just wanted to uh, say that. Also, just to piggyback off of what um, Catherine was saying as far as the landscaping and maintenance uh, committee, we're also looking at indigenous plants, uh, that plants of the indigenous Tigana that we can have um, in our public spaces, in our playground spaces to offer shade, and just to make sure that the uh, community is aesthetically pleasing. And one of the things that we're looking at, because we are looking at sustainability, is perhaps planting fruit trees or berry bushes or these type of things in public spaces as well. It might be a little bit more work, but at least we have um, these sustainable fruit trees and uh, in public in public spaces as well. And I want to just give a shout out to the bylaws committee. They did an excellent job, and I just really worked with a good group of people who were really dedicated to making sure that this got done. And um, it was absolutely a joy to work with them and see the professionalism that everyone exemplified across the board. And this is just a small example of what we can do together when we put our minds to it. So I'm going to meet myself. Amen to that. that appreciate uh, everyone in the bylaws. Absolutely. Um, it's uh, basically a foundation of this. And that was the first uh, organized group. It was a foundation of literally just saying that we can actually come together as a people and work it out. And that's the same thing that I'm using to encourage the rest of us. Let's connect like uh, um, like this group did, have the meetings, follow through, keep up, and work on whatever project we dedicate ourselves with. You know, that's proof that uh, this can be done. And the fact that we 
are a lot further than we were last summer. Uh, it's amazing. Let's keep the energy going. So I want to open things up for sustainable energy and utilities. Someone, please. Uh, that's the only group I've not heard from. It seems like Jonathan and Chaz is not available. So anyone else um, from that committee, just want you to give an overview and just let us know what's going on. We have, we have, we have 10 WhatsApp committee pages created. Two to three people that are organizing to communicate with everyone and keep up with updates. All right, so when someone is open, just let us know. But right now what I want to do is if anyone has to go, you can make your move and everything. But people are calling and had questions, uh, especially uh, newer people. I'm going to keep myself available on this call to answer questions. So right now what I want to do is just open things up for questions. And, uh, those are the things on the topic list that are actually uh, covered in the uh, beginning, uh, which you know sometimes when I have these things, I don't ever just read word for word. It's you know I just kind of go to a sequence. So we cover things about the future projection, um, deposit it set for phase two. So uh, anyone interested in starting, just send me an email and I'll get the information out to you. Uh, talk about us working on the 30 acres of land. Uh, the 99-year lease has been signed by the minimum group members that's required uh, to do the lease in Ghana, and uh, waiting for the chief and his elders to sign it so it can be processed and land registration and deed slash indenture is what we're looking for a lawyer to complete. And uh, Kobina or Kwabina, our consultant, is set to take care of land clearing, grading, and pillars as he has paid, and also the money was sent to do the work. So family, that was you know, literally um, the main set of things that we're talking about. Below that is just uh, support and details. So anyone who have any questions, just press star six to meet yourself, and I'll answer the question as as possible. If you have a question for just someone in the civic committee, then just, just speak uh, clearly in reference to that. Uh, go ahead. Um, uh, give your name, where you come from, and question. Hello, good morning. Yeah, it's Edmund, um, Edmund, Florida. Um, I'm actually in Renee's um, group, and also I believe in yours as well. Okay, so um, I've, I've uh, been listening to everything and it seems like everyone is very much on board and it seems like it's moving towards the right direction. Um, I was just wondering, when are we putting in, into these funds, uh, whether it be in $30 a month or even more? Um, and who, who do we give it to? Do we give it to um, our leaders of our group, then they send it to you, or how would we work this out? I'm very much ready. I just want to get right with it. Um, so if we, yeah, it's, uh, whenever it's good. It's something that we still have to get other get people in place, but uh, it won't be coming to me. I'm trying to um, what, we have, what I have set up here is our generic business as far as working the land investment. But when we talk about the things for the committee now, the goal is to work out a you know, bank account of how it's going to be collected and who's going to be responsible for it and keeping records and those things. Uh, so it may take I don't know it may take a few months and so on. So. Even at this very moment, we're just trying to make sure the basic and the foundation of everything is taken care of and laid. And then we can literally, get, you know, that's why I want to get all these things cleared up. Uh, even the, the minimum stuff of people sending their last set of documents and things that they need and working and then just, you know, going to the action part of what we need to get done. Uh, so I would say um, you know, my best estimate is in about two to three months. That should be enough time to get other things out of the way. Oh, okay. Monty, this is um, Renee. Uh, Green let, Green, go ahead. let me give him. Okay, once the planning and development committee meets and the bylaws, the membership amount that we propose, then we'll start collecting it. And that should take maybe a month or two. As far as the investors amount, that's something that I'll work on with the planning committee if we decide to go that way. But we have to do it as a quorum, a quorum excuse me, according to the bylaws, once we meet uh -huh. and to make a decision on what we are actually going to do, then that will be voted on and then we'll let our members know. And that should take at least a month or no, no longer than two months once we meet with each committee and let the members know. So that's how the, uh, oh. the money will be transacted. Because we need, that sec we need that secretary, we need that financial treasurer, so we know who's 
handling the money and how it's going to be dispersed and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And that's why I'm it's so important that we all build a foundation of connecting and networking and all the things I was talking about. That way we can kind of gel together and, and talk about more of these other serious things, like, you know, like what Renee was saying a little while ago. But uh, based on us not even having all the, our energy together, um, it's, you know, that's why I just gave the estimate I gave. But uh, it could be done as quick as, you know, a few weeks or a month. Uh, but, uh, you know, everything is honestly up to us. And the more of us are in organized order, quicker, faster those things can get done. Uh, just like I'm pushing uh, folks in Ghana to do everything organized and get it done. So we're making good progress. Thank you, Thank you Bomani. Thank you, Renee. All right, perfect. Uh, while you're on, um, Renee, let me know if you have anything else to say or anybody else have anything to share. But the line is open for questions. Just give your name, where you're calling from, and your question. Hi, Hello? this is Kim from California. All right, uh, um, greetings. Um, another person hold. Uh, greetings, uh, Kim. Go ahead with your question. My question is for Renee. Uh, as an investor, what does the investor stand to gain for the $6,000 investment? Now, this is Renee. That still has to be worked out. It was just a proposal. If we get the uh, six investors, then we'll make a determination of if there's going to be any interest because it, it depends if we want to give this money, loan this money to the community for two years, then we know our members are going to want something back. But we haven't decided right. because I've only talked to three people that are willing to invest, I just haven't given them the particulars. So let me get the other three people. Once I give members a call and they can say yay or nay, then we'll come together and say this is what we propose. And that should be take about no more than two weeks. By uh, I'm thinking June 5th, I should have talked to everybody that wants to contribute like that if we go with that actual design. Because it could be the other way, where we just say, okay, members, uh, it's going to be $100 per member. We want to collect it for six months. Then that would all be the membership. But it's different than the actual membership dues that we have to collect to just have other projects. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm muting myself. Excellent. Appreciate you. All right, family, what we're doing is uh, we'll make sure that we have time to time for everyone's um, questions. So this um, next person up. Sure. This is um, uh, Sam from Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, uh, Green Sam. Family. Sure. Um, this is great. I'm pleasantly pleased with the uh, efforts that folks have been putting in. Um, but I see uh, finance as uh, long-term expenditures, as we're talking about investors and things like that. I'm going to suggest here a accounting, budgeting, and finance committee that's separate from any one person, the treasurer, or the secretary receiving any funds. So the person, people that know how to crunch numbers and know how to raise funds and uh, go out in the community and get uh, some funds that can come into us, in addition to what uh, Renee was saying about investors, I'm going to suggest that we have that committee, which will be ongoing. It's not a temporary thing because we're talking about long term in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, absolutely, uh, Sam. And uh, the committees that we have, the 10, is what we have to work with. So uh, business and professionalism are mainly just the business part. Uh, uh, we can work uh, as a finance and we can um, – you're on those committees. So when we have our meetings, we can definitely just talk with you more and you can just help jot down some uh, notes and everything. From there, but I like the ideas that you're, you're mentioning. I, you know, it's a serious uh, operation that has to be taken care of. So, the financial planning of the community and all those things is in, you're literally looking for ideas from experts, and you're one of those experts that have the background. Uh, so, Wayne is muted. Uh, the person that was on a little while ago, can you go ahead and speak? Well, Monty, this is Renee. Are you allowing me to speak? I'm not sure. Oh, uh, you're, Renee, you're good. Uh, Wayne was chiming in, and his line was very loud. So, Wayne, uh, we may have to just kind of have to work out a different communication with you. Uh, but uh, go ahead, uh, Renee. Okay, yes. Uh, and also to uh, and, uh, let uh, Samuel know, these investors would be owner members. We're not going outside to anybody else but the members that are part of this because 
it's, it's critical that the members invest. Uh, but if, and, and that's something to think about because we have to have our vision. So we can't really go out, you know, to anybody else but the members. So, uh, but that's something to be discussed. I just want him to let, let him know that I'm just reaching out to the members to see what they can do. And if it has to go further, then we'll decide. So, but that, I, I like that committee. Thank you. I just wanted to interject that. Uh, perfect. And also, Sam, even if you want to help us with an overview of um, the, the financial planning itself, uh, that would definitely uh, help. And anyone with the, these different business backgrounds, any of the things that we're talking about, what helps a whole lot is, um, is overviews. And, you know, and then for the people that's in that same committee, just, you, know, you just present it and then we share. But everything has to be structured on paper and put together in research and reports and put together that way we can always go back and look at what we're working on. And when we're talking our, in our different committees, we can present to each other better. And then, you know, it's a more focused committee, so even if we have meetings twice a month or whenever, we can literally have time to just focus on that. A uh, question. Um, is, sure. Am I still too loud or is that oh, yeah. I'll guide when you're clear. Okay, yeah, I had a fan on. That might have been what, what you guys were hearing. But um, just to follow up on, on the, uh, the same topic, so we're thinking about developing um, a hospital, which is important, but that would take significant amount of, um, uh, of uh, funds, I would think. So, uh, for example, yeah, do so we want to go outside of the immediate group to get investors? So, uh, well, as and, far as the hospital, yes, uh, but the main thing that we're going to use for ourselves is a medical center. Uh, mm -hmm. Hospital is a bigger plan. Chief have to give land. Um, other Ghanaians would have to be open to invest in it. The chief would have to do the same. Uh, but that's a little tricky, and, we, and uh, we'd have to definitely just talk about that on planning and development. Uh, but mm -hmm. I wanted to share that. Yes. Yeah, so the medical clinic, for example, um, I would think for just as an example, the physician or the the, the person leading that effort would be the majority stakeholder or how is ownership um, going to be divided? Or is that person who's, who has the barbershop, for example, going to own 100% of the barbershop and pay um, some kind of dues or fees to uh, Black Star Development or whatever we choose to call, that, call ourselves? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we're going to have to be on a situation where we're sharing what we're doing, uh, but uh, if that's your business and you establish a business, you use your, you know, that's your profits, uh, and then you just have to work out what you can, because all of us have to give certain things back. Uh, and folks at Garvey Town had their, their, their numbers of what they have to, you know, what someone had to give back, 15% of what they earn to the community. Uh, that was never defined in any of our overview or paperwork. So a lot of things are things that, you know, you're trying to structure based on us talking and agreeing versus one or two people just write things and say, hey, this is what we're doing. Uh, so that's why certain things are not developed. But, yeah, more important, that um, hospital is, you know, it may need state funding, city funding, uh, country funding, and things like that. It's something that um, it goes beyond us as a community, honestly. But the medical center is just us putting our resources together and us acquiring what we need to acquire to get it built uh, based on our immediate needs as a community, uh, even though it's not something that we, we're saying other people can't use, but hospital that's combined with different investment and things like that would be perfect. Just like eventually you want to build a nice school for the entire town. And in that situation also, land will be donated by the chief and other people will be investing in it because so we're going from a level of building a small energy community community and then be using our energy to say to connect with other people and say hey let's build something on a bigger scale for the entire town and for that you know that region and so on hello hello uh, go ahead uh, give your name we're calling from yeah this is Kay and I'm, I'm a new member here I'm, a, I'm in Orlando Florida and I am a I'm a kind Hey, how are you, sir? I am a contractor, and I also do electric and solar. And um, I would like to talk to somebody about the sustainable. I would like to be on that committee. I talk. I'll be a member of that committee because I know I can assist with my experience and knowledge with the 
solar or we, um, renewable energy. So if you could, if you could text me the number or the group or the WhatsApp information for that group, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, what we don't want to do is we don't want to keep on adding people to groups, but um, I sent you an email to complete what you have to complete, then uh, we really have to talk, um, I might have to talk a lot more to you folks before I start adding them into groups and things. Uh, but I uh, you know, appreciate your skills and your background and everything. That's definitely one part of it. Uh, um, so let's make sure, we, uh, and just like the rest of the people in the group, um, try to make sure that everybody at the base set up going uh, from introductions to all the paperwork and so on. But I will uh, definitely reach out to you, and I'll reach out to this one of the guys calling him right now from that committee. We have you on plan and development and sustainable utilities. So that person is Chaz and Jonathan, but I will definitely connect with you on it and work it out. Uh, so what I'll say is look out for your WhatsApp message, and that way we can work out the introduction and things like that. And also note that these things are... As good as anyone is, um, most of the things are based on research. So none of us are going to be in a position right now to, to physically work on anything. So you have to be more open to research and more open to communicating groups and being parts of meetings. So if that's fine with you, uh, I can definitely add you. And for anyone else who wants to add another committee, um, it's the same conversation. Because what we also don't want to do is overwhelm anyone um, and having three or four committees emailing you and calling you and things like that. So, we, so that's why I'd rather have individuals on one committee and two committees and they can dedicate their time. Okay, all right, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, so family, um, one of, uh, we've been on for, for a while. I don't want to keep everyone, uh, but I want to be available to answer any questions anybody may have that way. You, know, you weren't just waiting this whole time for nothing. So our uh, next person, the question. All right, star six, so meet yourself. Chaz, Jonathan, Chaz, you were just called me a little while ago. Hey, Bomani, this is Derek out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, go ahead. Can you hear uh, me, Bomani? Go ahead. Okay, I have a question for you, and this revolves around um, the beginning phases and the stages that we can actually start to work on our project. I understand that the ladies and gentlemen mentioned um, what they were working on when it comes to planning and uh, development. But my question is, I don't know if I um, didn't hear it clearly, but uh, on the first phase, when will we be allowed um, to go in and start uh, what, whatever we're going to build on our, on our plot? When will we be able to begin building? Is it when they clear the land or do they have to have the utilities? installed if we want to start like on mine i'm going to start not with the main quarters but i'm going to put like a maybe a chalet or a dome small dome to just get the property going and be able to live on there you know uh for the time being or would that be allowed let's per se so i'm i'm asking what will the phases be that's so perfect i can go uh, the phase so right now we have um a, we have a 99 year lease that went for the chief uh, to sign so it could be processed to the land commission uh, Carbon is in charge of getting the land cleared and graded, and the surveyor uh, is responsible for laying out where the roads are going to be, so, they, so everything is going to be marked and pillars going to be set. Uh, so once they do all those things, which I'm um, pushing for them to get everything done since we've had the lockdown delay, everything to get done by the end of June. Uh, that way those who are making plans to get there in June can be there and also um, have access to record everything. But once that is uh, taken care of uh, and you have your name on your plot, um, uh, you'll be able to build what you need to build. Um, the ideal thing to do is for everybody to have building plans ahead of time. Um, we're trying to figure out who, the different people that's going to be helping us build, which is a serious research, and we can definitely talk about this week with uh, the uh, folks in the building um, and planning. Uh, but literally, uh, once our, our paperwork has come back, and the lease is signed and the land is clear, you can literally start building a structure, putting in a septic tank, uh, and setting things up. Uh, the goal is just not to delay, delay anyone, but at the same time, too, the goal is to make sure that everything is done in order uh, for you. So I would say um, the best estimate when everything will be ready, ready to really go, uh, will be the end of uh, June, July. 
And uh, at the same time, okay. to keep All everybody right. like posted, especially there in our group chats. Okay. All right. Okay. Because I talked to a builder there in Ghana, and I got a – he's working on right now a blueprint for a building, and he's going to have a layout. So I just want to get an idea that way I can, you know, get started when the time is, time is right. So I'm going to – I might be one of the first ones to be there. As soon as these planes get the road, I'll be there and ready to break ground. And if anybody needs any assistance, I'll be there with a pickup truck and running throughout back and forth from the city to there. And uh, so if you need my assistance, I'm Derek out of Atlanta. I'll be there in Ghana. Uh, perfect. And then uh, we just got to get – individual land survey and because that individual land survey is what you're going to give to your builder um, and because they will have all the like right now we have a site plan of this the 15 acres laid out um, and the surveyor once he does your specific uh, area then um, you'll be able to just get building plans drawn up to where you can kind of fit everything in your you know your 80 by 100 okay so we're we're moving along and then we're getting there little by little. And uh, I know it's probably sound like a lot of things that we're all working on, but that's why we have so many of us so we can cut the time of getting this stuff done. Because if you ask Garvey down, it takes 16 years and they still don't have much done. All right, uh, sorry to time myself. So for those who are still on, I'll stay on for a little bit more um, and just looking for next questions. Um, Derek, is that um, answer clear for you? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right, perfect family. Uh, star six to unmute yourself. Uh, next uh, question. And also, anyone who has to go, definitely understand you have to go. Um, I'm just hanging out for another 15 minutes on call and answer any questions. Hey, hey Mani, this is Toya. Uh, Green Toya, Charles, hold for a second. Uh, go ahead, Toya. Okay, no problem. I just wanted to make a quick suggestion. Um, I understand that, um, you know, some of us are looking to try to build a community garden. We don't know if that's going to be in this phase or in the second phase. But uh, regardless, when we hit the ground there, and it's going to take us, you know, quite a few, uh, you know, weeks and days to build our personal structures, um, you know, we do want some things to be available, um, you know, to eat. Uh, I was just wondering if it would be a good idea um, to, for the people who are uh, looking to build those community gardens to start to uh, collect um, the heirloom seeds, um, non-GMO seeds, uh, to make a contribution uh, to that community garden, um, you know, while we're here on the ground, or if that's something that is readily available to us uh, when we come uh, to the continent. A tropical country, they're going to have seeds and plants and things available. But also, for anyone who wants to bring bring their own seeds, that's always a great idea. The community garden, uh, only space that we have, we have the business center space, security post, um, the community center, and also the park. So any kind of trees, just like you know, anywhere if you you go, you see trees everywhere. But instead of those just being regular trees, it's maybe like a mango tree, um, orange tree, and things like that. And uh, as far as this community gardening, you can do some of that in the, the park area. But uh, what would be nice if everybody can do is plant things in their front yard um, around their house and also plant one or two trees in their backyard. Uh, so those are some of the ways we can get, and get things going, but it's going to take a while to grow and everything. So uh, right out front of the main road, that's where you, know, where you have access to your shop and your food and things like that. Um, you'll find, you know, in Ghana it's popular like you're driving from Accra to Cape Coast and along the entire strip on the left and the right is kind of where people set up. And even when you go into our community area called the Akati Junction, uh, you'll see people there just selling the uh, basic things. Um, and Imakas always tell me that, um, that she can literally go shopping by just going to a few stands and getting everything she needs for food. Uh, so, you know, those things are uh, available, um, and we want to make sure people are not, not denied those things. But uh, as it takes maybe about two to three years to get things all set up, the goal is to have things growing and looking good uh, in that time. That's our one of the focus on grading the land so we can start working on the different plants that we want that we can plant around the actual property. Thank you. Uh, excellent. You're welcome. All right, uh, Chaz, I'm going to unmute you again. 
All right, Dr. Green Shaz, how are you? We're going through the overview of the different uh, committees, and I was trying to get a response from you or Jonathan, and we ended up just skipping you guys after we just kept on going real fast. So I just want to give okay, you a, uh, open things up just to give an overview on sustainable utilities and what you guys are working on and how is meeting and the WhatsApp group coming along. Okay, for the most part, I've uh, been in more direct contact with Jonathan. I would like the mem other members of our group, though, uh, to con contact me via email so we can get some ideas in terms of uh, what their vision is, what their talents are, and then see how we can uh, uh, interface with one another to see what uh, which direction we can go into. Right now, Jonathan and I are uh, uh, doing some research. We passed some information along. We had a couple of members to send some other uh, recommendations which we'll look at in terms of like uh, this information is to find out is the kinds of uh, sustainable energy systems that we can use, which ones we can uh, uh, even look at mixing. I mean, it, it, you know, uh, it, it's a poor mouse that only has one hole to run into. And when he laughs at the cat, it's because he has another hole to run into. So we're trying to figure out which are the best uh, alternatives to go to. And uh, that's where we are so far. Now, I'd like for it to be more in-depth. That way, with the rest of the members talking with us, we can get an idea in terms of um, in terms of uh, uh, what what kind of uh, fresh new ideas they may have. It doesn't matter what your experience is. If you have an interest, interest is, the be is, 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 is better than nothing at all because interest will take us into, into some directions. So we're open to all kinds of uh, um, of uh, uh, recommendations and advice and ideas. All right, perfect, and um, and. Uh, the good thing about everything is that uh, everyone is on that WhatsApp group, so uh, family, uh, whenever individuals in the group that are organizing it is asking for, for feedback, give them the feedback they're looking for. And also, Chaz, I had one uh, person, um, uh, Kayon Jones, uh, that actually put into you guys' group. So I just got to talk with him and add him into, you know, send him you guys' information and vice versa. And the same thing as people reach out to me and say they want to be involved in this. So my goal is just to talk to everyone that way. Uh, we everyone that's new, I talk with them that way. We can just give them a clear idea of, you know, make sure that they have everything organized and on, uh, that way no one puts more pressure on themselves to, um, to do certain things because this thing is going to move a little faster and uh, it's going to, the more focused we have the majority of the group, the more efficient it is to get everything done. Correct. Also, I wanted to say also, uh, even if a person is not part of the group, if you have an idea, post it with us. You know, uh, 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 send, send me an um, email, WhatsApp or whatever, or even a uh, member of the group. So, you know, in terms of ideas, as far as the group go, yes, I want I want us to all get together so we can start um, uh, just pri prioritizing where our focus should be. Because uh, as you just mentioned, it's a short it's a short time that we have to get this thing together. And there's a lot of work to be done, so um, please, uh, you know, as soon as you can, you know, um, get up with us. All right, excellent. Appreciate it, Chad. I don't want to hold you. Uh, anybody else that was waiting to, um, to ask a question, uh, the line is open. Uh, star 6 to meet yourself, ask your question, and then we're going to close in the next few minutes. And anyone who has to go, um, don't let me hold you. Uh, it's getting late. Hey, hey, Bamani, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you loud and clear. All right, this is Kevin from Arkansas. I just have one question regarding um, what we can place on our lots when we get there. Would there be any restrictions on what type of home we could build um, based on community covenants or, or whatever the case may be? Uh, no specific. Um, you know, we don't have any. We didn't drop any of those rules and say that you only can get like a one floor, or two floor. It's uh, flexible and uh, definitely encouraging more sustainability than anything else. At the end of the day, what we wanted all the homes uh, to do is to look nice, neat, and you know, organized. Okay. Uh, that way, they can deal with the rest of the people's homes. And as long as we all make our homes nice and neat, um, we should all be able to just gel in where it looks good. And if we work out a sequence where some homes could be some places, then that's fine. But literally, those things are never just uh, planned. Um, and we end up not doing that because when we're dealing with Garvey Town, that's when the craziness happened. Uh, people say they want this, and they're like, no, you can't have this. Can I get this bill? Can I bring my own builders? And it's like, 
after like the 50th, you know, it was like, okay, well, these folks obviously either are not trying to accommodate us or maybe we're just being too difficult as a people. And I realized that uh, people should have what they need to have. Um, we're all, all of us are sacrificing a lot to, to be a part of a future in Africa. And um, we need to be as comfortable as possible. So we have people that can build dome homes, container homes, regular one floor, regular two floor brick homes, and things like that. Okay. Thank you. Bamani, this is Ronita. I, I wanted to ask on something a little more specific. Sure. Um, you, said, you said there won't be any restrictions, but what if we want two domes on one plot of land? And if you can fit it on there, it's uh, it's fine. It's, it's all in the, the square of your land. That's uh, fine. Um, you just need to make everything uh, nice and neat. Um, and if we really had a bunch of restrictions, we really had to just lay that out. So we don't want to throw anybody off with it. But just think of the context of that. Just make it look nice and neat to where it would gel with everybody else's place. We want everyone to have a nice looking roof. Uh, there are situations where we just really have to just talk amongst each other and work things out. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, uh, anyone else have uh, any uh, questions? Yeah, Sam McCarthy, you got the email, uh, Bomani, about my uh, hobby, right? If you send an email, and I'm, since I'm hosting a conference, I'm not really looking at emails. I'm trying to do a few sure. things to okay. close in, but I did, you have time. Come, I did see an email come from you, but yet some, now I'd have to read in the morning and, and reply back to you. Just add, add, me, add me to that committee. Agricultural um, livestock. That's that's my hobby. Yeah, and that's another thing too. The same thing as the other person. I just want to make sure that you have time to communicate with everyone. Cause I, cause so if anyone is telling me they want to be put in a community committee, you know, I'm kind of expecting you to just be active with the people there and you know make time to reach out to them and everything and make make sure that you have time. So if you're fine with that one, also, um, just like Kayon, I'll I'll send the the group organizers the information and send you a message on WhatsApp. And you just kind of, you know, and it's the same thing I was explaining to them. So what we want to do, we want to make sure that everybody's clear and have all the stuff that they need to have in before we start just adding people to a bunch of committees. Because um, it's kind of like we want to take care of the first order of business before we get to the next and so on. So I will uh, take care of that for you. Just look out for a WhatsApp message um, and then an, uh, email and so on. And so you can see the rest of the people in that committee. Sure. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Once again, this is Bomani Timba, and I'm organizing our energy for our Black Star Repatriation and Pan African Community. And I will keep everybody posted. Everyone that's on the group WhatsApp, um, my goal is to just send updates um, throughout the week uh, for you to you know, be posted. And anything important, uh, send via email, and I'll send a text message out to WhatsApp saying I sent an important email, um, and it's just up to individuals to keep up with uh, details. And anyone who want to talk about anything, just give me a call, reach out to me, and we'll communicate. Um, I try to keep my schedule flexible for us to talk as much as possible. And uh, beyond that, just honestly want everyone that's committed to a committee to communicate and join whatever conference call, and then note the fact that you, it's, you're on WhatsApp, so you can see everyone else's phone number and information and you can reach out to individuals, um, and you're basically telling them the same thing everyone should tell each other. I'm a part of this committee in the community, calling to connect and introduce myself. And for those who are on the Facebook uh, committee, the uh, members only one, uh, that's another way you can introduce yourself and see who some of the other people in communities are. And then we have a, just a, a general uh, Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African you know, committee, uh, which is I was like 500 and some people, I have no idea who's on that. But all I do is just post updates and videos and conference call recordings and so on to give uh, individuals a chance to reach out to us uh, that way as we begin to just add one or two more people every week or so on and keep building our group. So family, uh, beyond that, um, appreciate everybody's time. Uh, we went over a bit, uh, but... Um, I work on editing this call is two hours, so it's going to take a little time and try to make sure that everybody have a nice, clean, uh, edited uh, conference call to listen to for the recording. For those who want to go back and take notes and for those who missed out on the call. 
So family, everyone take care. Um, appreciate your energy and time, and we'll keep in touch. And uh, I'm hoping that all committees that didn't meet or connect last week can start uh, by arranging meetings and communicating and connecting this week. And anyone else, honestly, that's interested in being part of our group, just reach out to me uh, so we can talk. I can get you the information, and we can get you organized, and then we just add you to the flow of what we got going already. All right, so family, take care. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. All right, take care. Got everybody unmuted. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.